pack your bags, Mike. We're going on a boating adventure. Ooh, I can't wait. Where are we off to? An abandoned barge that was once a flagship McDonald's restaurant. Mm, okay. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> this was my exact reaction. When I first learned about McBarge uh, from a pair of videos that actually came across on YouTube uh, from a channel called Bright Sun Films. Those links are in the show notes. And uh, when I saw these films or these videos, I knew that I wanted to talk about it on the show with you. Let's just get it out of the way. It's not Bargy McBarge face or anything like that. There is no, this is going to get that done now. This is not anything to do with that. We are turning the clock back a bit to explain exactly why a 187 foot long floating vessel was transformed into a McDonald's. So, 1986, more specifically, the 1986 World's Fair held that year in Vancouver. You, as a well-informed, long-lasting listener of Ungenius, may say, World's Fair, that rings a bell. Well, it's because we spoke about World's Fairs in episode 85 of Ungenius, but if you need a quick refresher, they are massive events meant to showcase the achievements of nations and corporations in the field of art, science, technology, and more. If you have not heard this episode or you would like a further refresher, go and check out the link in the show notes for episode 85. For the 1986 fair, Vancouver's chosen theme was, air quotes, transportation and communication, colon, world in motion, dash, World in touch. Hmm. Does that really roll off the tongue? I mean, not if you pronounce all the all of the like commas and stuff. That's not yeah. Gonna... So transportation and communication, world in motion, world in touch. See, that was so much more romantic when you said it at that time. The world in touch. World in touch. The event was a huge success, drawing some 22 million visitors over the five months it was open. That was double that of the Knoxville Fair in 1982 and three times that of Louisiana's in 1984. Suck it, Tennessee. Yeah. Boo Knoxville, I say. <laughs> yeah, you're like, bring it to Memphis. It will be 20 times larger. We got a pyramid already. You don't have to build anything <laughs> weird. That's true. You know, the pyramid would fit really nicely in the kind of overall aesthetic of a World's Fair. I think it would. So that is not to say that the expo in question here today was without its hiccups. Construction was slowed after labor disputes, and evictions made to clear the land for the event drew criticism from many, as these things tend to do. That was before Twitter, even. <laughs> you take a bunch of people's property to build a fair, people get, people get upset. Uh -huh. There's also just like this weird thing about this fair that it had a really, really bad timing, uh, especially in two of the, the national pavilions. I just want to read this section of Wikipedia to you because mm -hmm. it's just like a just a series of blows. The U.S. pavilion centered around the country's space program. However, it had been less than four months after NASA had its worst disaster when the space shuttle Challenger exploded shortly after takeoff. The USSR's pavilion had an even more problematic theme. It celebrated the Soviet Union's nuclear industry, but less than a week before the fair opened, the Chernobyl nuclear disaster occurred. It's cursed. That is a cursed World's Fair. <laughs> also, 1986. Bad time. Bad. Hey. Bad hey, time. I was born in 86. It's actually the day of the Challenger disaster. Come That's on. That's what I'm saying. Bad time. Ba only bad things happened in 1986. Wow. The I'm Look, all I can say is what I'm presented with. This episode of Ingenious is brought to you by Squarespace. Say you've got a company, a brand, a world's fair, whatever it is, you want to build your brand and grow your business online. Well, you're going to need a website. With Squarespace, you can build a beautiful website that is engaging with your audience. You can have all of your media. You can have a store, all sorts of stuff running all on one site. Squarespace has you covered for all of it. The online store is really awesome. You can sell physical and digital products side by side. They have all the tools you need to manage it. And you can send out email campaigns with Squarespace. You can get visitors to sign up as email subscribers and start them on the journey to become loyal customers. And all of Squarespace's awesome design tools to customize your website, uh, they are here in email campaigns as well. So when someone gets an email from you, it's going to have the same uh, brand ingredients, your site colors, your logo that you're using on your site. So you can have a cohesive brand experience for your visitors. 
I love building on top of Squarespace. It is my go-to. I recently helped a friend of mine finish up a website for his company. He went uh, independent last year and was getting a site put together. And the site is really heavy in imagery. And so we have some really nice image galleries built out. And it just looks awesome. And I think he's really going to have a lot of success through it. So head on over to squarespace.com slash ungenius for a free trial. There's no credit card required to get started. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code ungenius to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name. Once again, that's squarespace.com slash ungenius. And when you decide to sign up, use the offer code ungenius to get 10% off your first purchase and to show you support for the show. Our thanks to Squarespace for their support of Ungenius and all of Relay FM. So now we've got the timeline of that very, very, very bad, no good year set. Mm. Let's get down to it with this floating McDonald's. I know that all of you Ungenius heads out there have been saying, but Steve and Mike, what about the floating McDonald's? Well, in line with the transportation and communication theme, the idea was that this restaurant, one of five McDonald's on the expo grounds, would showcase unique technology and architecture. Oh, and we actually have to mention the ship's name, which I can't believe we haven't at this time. The barge was called the Friendship 500. Okay, McBarge is a good name, but Friendship 500 is also awesome. What's the 500? I don't know, because it's not 500 feet long. I don't know. I don't know. Believe it or not, McBarge was not the first float in McDonald's. Come on. (laughs) That honor actually goes to a location in St. Louis, Missouri. But the plan for our McBarge that we're talking about today was to use this location during the Vancouver Expo, then to be able to move it to a new location if needed afterwards. Sadly, that second part didn't happen. The restaurant was closed after the Expo and sat floating at the site for five years before the new owners of the property made McDonald's move it. The barge was then moved to nearby Burnaby, where it bobbed in the water for years. By this point, the fixtures of the restaurant have been removed, and the large interior spaces have started to decay. Urban explorers frequented the barge, and sadly, some damage has been done to the ship. In 2003, which somehow is 20 years ago, the barge was rented by Marvel Entertainment and New Line Cinema to be a shooting location for the film Blade Trinity, which I did not know existed as a movie until I wrote the script. Oh, okay. Do you see Blade Trinity? No, I don't think I've seen any of the Blade movies, but they're bringing Blade back. That was hard to say. Bringing Blade back? Ooh, that was that's very tricky. Bringing Blade back. Six years later, from 2003, Howard Meekin, who owned the barge at this point, announced plans to rehabilitate the space as the centerpiece for a new waterfront development. His plans were rather ambitious, with multiple restaurants, paddleboat rentals, and even a float plane service between nearby locations. While there was some community support for the project, it was ultimately rejected by local government leaders and did not move forward. I like how simple the plan starts. You gotta have some restaurants, you can like rent a paddle boat, go on a date, and then a plane that lands on water to take you to nearby towns. (laughs) Yeah. In 2015, he announced that Friendship 500 would be leaving its mooring point in Burrand Inlet for the first time in nearly 30 years. It was towed to Maple Ridge, British Columbia on December 22nd, 2015. He announced that the barge was scheduled for a $4.5 million refit there before being relocated to an undisclosed location for an unannounced purpose. (laughs) Not shady at all. In an interview, Meekin said, I can't say where. It's quite unique. and It's going to be an outstanding attraction. It's going to attract a lot of attention. I'm happy to now be able to announce that Relay FM has purchased McBarge for a large floating podcast production facility. I do not remember the meeting that we had on that. Well, you don't handle the books for the company. I just decided to go for it. Okay, so look out for a Relay FM coming to a town near you as long as you live near the water, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, it's probably a better plan, like this floating podcast production facility than what came next for the poor barge in 2017 it was announced that it was going to be the home of a new attraction named deep ocean discovery center however the crowdfunding campaign launch event was canceled due to weather and was never rescheduled the weather never let up (laughs) i guess guess (laughs) in 2020 it was reported that there were plans to refit the barge into a seafood restaurant 
though a location for it had not been secured. Later in 2021, it was reported that an undisclosed site had been selected, but was waiting government approval. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that in a few years' time, we can follow up on this with some good news. That would be nice. If you want to read more about McBarge and Expo 86, we have some links in the show notes at relay.fm slash ungenius slash 183. While you're there, you can submit uh, feedback with a topic of your choosing from Wikipedia. It'll go on the list for future consideration. You can also uh, become a member and support Ungenius directly. You can find us online. Mike is on Mastodon at imike at mike.social. You can find me as ismh at eworld.social. And you can find the show at ungenius at relayfm.social. Until next time, we eat a burger on the waves, Mike. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all.